Hello, my name is Nicole Franceschini and I'm a lecturer at the Heritage Management Unit and the Chair of Cultural Management at BTU Cottbus Semptenberg. Over the past months, students from the World Heritage Studies Program at BTU Cottbus Semptenberg have cooperated with Blue Shield Germany in the preparation of a communication campaign to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the 1970 Convention. Within the framework of a study project at BTU Cottbus Zemftenberg, we had the chance to reflect together with Blue Shield Germany on the 1970 Convention. We have explored the 1970 Convention and its mean of implementation, and we had an open a reflection on the role played by communication in the implementation of international conventions, looking not only at traditional means of communication, but be really paying attention to the possibilities that are offered by social media and more visual means of communication. During the study project, students have been interviewing the voices of the 1970 conventions, people and institutions, including researchers and practitioners who are involved in the implementation of the convention at different levels. Among the students working on this campaign, there are Mary, Idil and Tatiana. They have been working on the communication campaign and on shaping a communication campaign via the Twitter account of Blue Shield Germany. Tatiana, Idil, Mary, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Tatiana Sanchez. I'm from Colombia. I'm a journalist and I have a specialization in marketing management and I'm here studying right now World Heritage Studies. Hi, I'm Idil Gumish. I'm from Turkey. I have a background in urban and regional planning. I'm studying World Heritage Studies at BTU. Hi, my name is Mary Kane. I'm originally from Pennsylvania in the United States. I have a background in archaeology with a specialization in prehistoric archaeology, and I'm currently a student at BTU Campus. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Idil, and thank you, Tatiana. So, Mary, why is it important to communicate international conventions? So I think inviting or communicating conventions are important because it's conventions are more than just pieces of paper that everyone comes together to create. It's an it's a tangible, I guess, it's a tangible manifestation of efforts by institutions, different groups of people, communities, um, researchers that are working to try to address issues uh, that relate to heritage and heritage conservation and, and preservation. And it goes beyond trying to protect or trying to address issues for just cultural heritage, like what we've been addressing with the 1970 convention, but heritage and culture and all of its manifestations. So I think trying to communicate not just what the conventions are, but how they affect even us in our everyday life, how we interact with culture. I think it's important to communicate because I think the public isn't always aware of the effort that goes into creating these conventions and why these conventions are important, um, especially if you look at the times in which different conventions arise out of um, the first um, with, the, with conventions such as the Hague Convention, in the 50s, emerging out of, for example, um, World War II or the results of World War II and the destruction that that played to culture. So I think it's important that it's not just showing what the conventions are, but also communicating the efforts by these by these different people, convent or institutions and communities, how they are working by creating these different conventions to protect culture through time essentially. I think it's important as well to show how these efforts through manifested through conventions are affecting how we today interact with culture. So I think that that's one of the reasons communicating conventions in particular is of significant importance. Thank you, Mary, for your very comprehensive answer. And this actually raises a second question, a second important question that I would like to ask Idil. Do you think that communication is an important skill for heritage practitioners, especially in today's world? 
Absolutely. Since heritage conservation and management involve many actors, uh, communication is one of the crucial skills uh, that a heritage practitioner should have uh, to be a bridge between communities, uh, stakeholders and right holders. And in this sense, com um, heritage practitioners uh, play an important role in understanding the needs of uh, different actors. And in order to coordinate these different uh, demands and manage the process, communication is a vital skill to solve the problems, basically. And at the same time, since community is uh, an important part of uh, heritage conservation and management, uh, well, co communication is again a key to uh, raise the awareness within communities and work with them in harmony. So that's why we really need to understand the significance of communication in the field, uh, because if we get better at communicating heritage, it would surely improve the work we do on heritage conservation, management and preservation. Thank you, Idil, and thank you for your remark on the importance of communicating conventions at the local level. I think this is very important and it's something that is particularly important in the work of heritage professional and something that we should consider of utmost importance. And in this framework, another important question is why celebrating and why communicating the 50th anniversary of the 1970 convention? Why is it important to use platforms, communication platforms, to celebrate this event? Tatiana, what do you think about it? Yes, yeah, sure. The achievement itself of the 1970 convention is huge and important international agreement that has helped in many levels. Many countries have made stronger the legislation to fight against illicit traffic. Many objects have been found and returned to their countries and it has created collaborative strategies between countries and that's very important. A convention like this requires to be implemented in a national, regional and local level. And this could be only possible with coordination, willingness and with collaboration of all the people possible. That means also that it's not only in the political level. So raising the awareness of the different actors, the communities and citizens is fundamental because especially in this convention, every report, every suspect move gives valuable information to the authorities to follow the clues about our heritage in danger. Also communicating is essential to show and also accept that the world changed. After 50 years, we are in a world with new challenges and it's crucial that these kind of documents evolve and close gaps to adapt to this new context and also to respond efficiently to things that were not in the imagination of UNESCO and no one 50 years ago. So communicating these 15 and 50 anniversaries meaningful uh, for us because we value the power of communication, the power of information, and we believe that people can act if they know that they are essential for this, and of course if they know what they can do. Finally, a digital communication strategy like this that we made with Blue Shield help us to show how a document is more than that. Through the voices of the people who are working on this day by day, we could show that a convention created 50 years ago with collaborative work can achieve important objectives for the field and contribute to change the world. Thank you, Tatiana. And thank you, Mary, Idil, and Tatiana for this interview and for very well explaining the important role played by communication in the implementation of international conventions. We really want to thank Blue Shield Germany and particularly Elizabeth and Felipe for working with us on this project. This has been a very interesting project. It has been a very helpful project to raise awareness on the importance of communication in relation to the field of heritage and international heritage conventions. Thank you very much and really thank you for offering us this great learning opportunity. Furthermore, I think it's important to thank all the students who have been working within the framework of the study project and who have been doing a fantastic job in bringing to you the views and the experiences of the voices of the 1970 convention. So a big shout out goes to Mary, Idil, Tatiana, Mathilde, Azad, Dipanita, Metali, and Tania. Thank you very much. 
Last but not least, remember to watch the interviews that students of BTU Cottbus have been preparing together with Blue Shield Germany and check out the Blue Shield Germany webpage and their YouTube account to learn more about the 1970 convention and the people and institutions involved in implementing it.